The Supreme Court is going to overturn Roe and Wade. And women all over America are totally screwed. My name is Fat Mike, I'm an old punk rocker. Who's more well known for being a shit talker? A troublemaker and iconoclast. I thought I'd do more damage with my own podcast. No more fried chicken. Or any kind of derby. Cause Kentucky hates women. Episode 16. Sansara might be a communist, but she's fighting for a woman's right to have a safe abortion. Not so much in the third trimester, unless there's a health risk. Uh, hello. Hello, Sansara. Uh, Hi, Mike. My How friend, are you? My friend. My friend who is for abortions, right? That's 100% true. You're, you're Both very parts. much for abortions. I'm, I'm for abortion on demand and without apology. Uh, I don't think uh, you, you have like a think. little bubble next to you that said the same thing. What's well, a square? Yes, yes, it's sort of surrounded by it. I I did that. I did a special setup for this podcast. Uh, and we're wearing green, right? Yes. Well. So right now, the U.S. Supreme Court is getting ready to rule on a major case that everybody is expecting will gut or completely overturn abortion rights nationwide. And I'm with Rise Up number four, the new number four, abortionrights.org. It's Rise Up for abortionrights.org. And we are organizing emergency protests across the country for people to rise up for abortion rights. And we've taken up the green, the green bandana and the color green, which came out of first Argentina, then Colombia, then across Ireland. Latin America. Ireland. It came out of Ireland. <laughs> Different meaning there, but actually it's become a symbol internationally for abortion rights. And no, we don't pinch each and, other. Right. There good, go. good. Well, you can't pinch each other if you're wearing green. So you're good. <laughs> and I, can, I'm wearing hella green. Look at this. I got green I shorts. Know, it's green. Green. Look at this. <laughs> wow. What about the socks? Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, I have black socks. socks. Okay. Black ah. socks, green shoes, green you shirt. You could have said they were green. No Ca- one can cataract. see them. <laughs> we'll make an allowance for that. Okay. So... Uh, thank you for coming on the show. We've spoken before, and you're in Kentucky right now, a state that just uh, made a law that bans all abortions. That's right. Actually, a week ago today, um, there was new restrictions passed, and a week ago tomorrow, all the abortion clinics, well, there's only two in the state, shut down. They canceled all you the abortions. You can't say all. It's both. Abortion. Both, ab- both abortion clinics. That's right. The, both abortion clinics in the state canceled all the appointments for abortions. Women had to travel other places or other pregnant people had to travel if they could get the resources together. This became the first state that has completely shut down abortion rights and abortion access. But like I said at the beginning, if we don't stop the Supreme Court from gutting Roe v. Wade, this could be half the country in a matter of weeks. So this is an emergency. And one of the biggest things that's so alarming is most people don't even know it's happening. When that, you and I spoke. That's why we're doing this. You know, even yeah. though this isn't uh, a pro-abortion show, I mean, I'm pro-abortion, but you know, we're a music show. We're a music show, but yeah. this is so important that we're doing this. Yeah, I have a, I have a, know, I have a and, question. And I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. I heard. Is it true that if they're trying to pass a law right now, that even if you get an abortion in another state, they can prosecute you if you come back? That is uh, a proposal in Missouri and is very serious and legal scholars have uh, made the analogy to the fugitive slave laws that preceded the civil war when you know half the country was uh, slave states half the country was free states and then at a certain point the south said you know what um we're going to enforce and the federal government did too we're going to enforce that even the free states have to participate in kidnapping and transporting back into slavery black people who maybe were freed from slavery, escaped from slavery, or were just, uh, were never enslaved, but were some white person in the South said that they had been and they were kidnapped and brought down South. So this is, you know, the federal court is saying, well, we want to leave it up to the states whether to allow or not allow abortion, which is outrageous because no woman should ever be forced to have a child against their will. But the reality is that it won't be left to the states. The anti-abortion movement, the Christian fascist movement is going like a bulldozer for every right of women they're coming for birth control next 
And they are trying to um, criminalize helping women even travel to another state. So they were trying to shut it down in the whole state of Missouri and criminalize traveling to another state. And that's kind of a, what one would expect if this onslaught is not stopped. What do you mean? When the, so you wouldn't be able to even, even if you were just pregnant, you wouldn't be able to travel? That's right. Well, what they, the law actually said is that anybody who helps you travel or anybody who gives you an abortion in another state or helps you get one, that they could be sued by vigilantes and prosecuted. So this, this is a work. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I don't understand <clears throat> how that works. It's a, <laughs> See, it's a, war, it's a war on Uber drivers and pregnant women. If you commit a crime in a different state, you don't get prosecuted on the laws of the state that you live in. You get prosecuted in the state that you committed the crime. Like if we're looking at abortion, how it, they basically. are, which is basically a crime, how are you then prosecuted if you get an abortion in a different state? How are you prosecuted by the same laws of your state of origin? That does not make sense to me just from like a law standpoint well, at all. Yeah, I think what she was saying was like they're going back, going back to pre, a slave law. Yeah, pre-slave laws where people would have – you would – the they're – forcing you to have to participate right 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 but yeah. we but and if they don't get it with done slave laws slaves weren't considered people yeah right but now women are considered people but they were so they're, but, but, they, but they're taking them down it's a perfect enough. example it's a perfect example because black people were considered people even though they were discriminated against and, and right i all thought the by the law that they existed. weren't <clears throat> But in the in the free states they were, yeah, and right. that's the whole point. Right. That in the free states they were forced to enforce the Fugitive Slave Act, and okay. that's the analogy. And your question is completely, completely one hundred percent on point because you are thinking in a rational rule of law way. And what we're facing, and this is already enacted in Texas, where it's a vigilante law mm-hmm. that says people it's not enforced by the state individuals any individual can sue anybody who helps a woman get an abortion there and that's why that state shut down abortions and so we're seeing a resurrection of vigilantism right. an assault on women's lives and fundamental rights and really an assault on the rule of law and this is part of uh you know why why I rise up for abortion rights and myself um we talk about the assault on abortion rights as the battering ram First, it's, it's, it's the enslavement of women to force women to have children right. against their will. But it's also a battering ram of a larger fascist program. If this is not stopped, they're ripping up the rule of law. They're coming for the rights of other people. And so your question is, right. and even, even the question is, yeah. is so on target. And it so speaks to how outrageous what we're facing. Oh, it's insane. And uh, this is this war on women and against Uber drivers in certain states. And Uber drivers, if and they Uber help them. Drivers, if they help them. Uh, or friends it's 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 by the christian right i mean this is yes these are christians or or what or i mean it's not jews that are doing this definitely it's not buddhists uh it's it's christians (laughs) and you know uh it's it's insanity i mean it's people who believe in noah's ark uh, or or salt statues or you know and uh i don't know if you've read the god delusion by dick dawkins but he says this is what happens to a society when you don't uh, criticize and uh, make fun of these people that believe this shit. That's it doesn't make any sense. You know, if someone uh, believed in Santa Claus for their whole life and based arguments, <laughs> hey, you know what? We're gonna get our gifts through the chimney. You just wait. And if you don't do, if you don't believe this, then we're gonna fuck you. And that's what's happening. And you have to keep the baby. <laughs> and you have to. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> Santa Claus got you pregnant, and y- you don't have to keep that baby, little one. Came down a lot of chimneys. <laughs> yeah. It is. You know, came I down just all want to the say, chimneys. It all the chimneys. It's ridiculous. Okay. It's, it, it, I, call them, I call them Christian fascists, and I think it's I true. I call them Christians. They're every bit. The same call, thing, well, same I, thing. I, yeah, we call them kooks, and they need to chill the fuck I, out see, and mind their business. I don't. I don't, and for this reason, because even though I'm an atheist, I'm a militant atheist, I personally am a communist revolutionary. Rise Up for Abortion Rights is made up of people from yeah. different perspectives. Let me be clear. That's but I'm why you like the bandana, because you're a revolution. Yeah. There you go. And I'm an atheist, but I recognize there's a lot of people who believe in God. There's a lot of people of faith, of different faiths, who do not think women should be forced to have children against their will. And right. in Rise Up for Abortion Rights, there are reverends. There are religious leaders who are standing up for abortion rights. I call the people assaulting, the people like Amy Coney Barrett, um, uh, some of these other people in the Supreme Court who are coming for abortion rights, Christian fascists, because they are 
they, they have a dark ages, biblical literalist view of the Bible, and they want to use it as the law of the land in a theocratic way. And so it's a, it's not Christianity. It's not everybody who believes in the Bible. It's, it's, it's a, it really is a political form of Christian fascism. And it's virulently misogynist hatred oh, yeah. towards women, revenge towards the fact that women got out of their place over the last couple of generations and they want to slam this backwards. And that's where abortion sits very centrally. Because if you are forced to have a child, if, if Santa Claus comes and forces you to have a child against your will, then you don't see women in public life the way we have in the last couple of generations. Women in academia, women in right. the medical profession. No, you got to be. You got to go to the North Pole. You got to. You got to make right. toys for the, the rest Bible, of your life. Women are either mothers or whores. That's it. That's all. Yeah, and so if you want to have a child, that's stepped beautiful. out of that. But even but people who, who child, even right. people who believe in the Bible, I mean, I understand that it's a parable, and you can get something from reading the stories, maybe. Right. But no one would uh, use a two thousand year old medical journal. But they take this. no. I'm with you. Right. <laughs> and I don't I'm think I think you. these I'm people are you. these people are fucking smart too. This isn't like them. I don't even think that they believe in this crazy god up there. They're doing this all for control. Well, the politicians the, are just doing yeah. it for well, votes. They're, they're doing they're doing it for control in Except the end because if they can fucking stop women from fucking having their own choices. And it's going to make the communities dumber, and then they're going. You know, this is as old as time. And, and they're so organized right now, uh, which is which is crazy because uh, supposedly Democrats are running uh, the government, and they're not doing shit about it, right? Yeah, and Tell still, me more. so this I I want to bring up. We are rise up for abortion rights dot org. It's rise up number four. I'm going to say it. Rise up number four abortion rights dot org, and everybody should it's go confusing. to the website. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you froze. Oh, oh they cut the Christians. Paused for a the second. fascists cut Uh-oh. off. Hello. <laughs> Woo. Okay, you're back. All right, we're gonna come back. There we go. It was like you know, I said something bad about God, and and that's what happened. Right. Um, she she wasn't the, listening. Uh, yeah, she never does. <laughs> I was just gonna say we are doing a nationwide week of action, and this is a time when everybody has to come out in the streets and say, no, women are not incubators. We refuse to let the Supreme Court take away women's right to abortion. May 8th through May 14th, the website is rise up, number four, abortionrights.org. And the idea is that we have to bring forward such massive opposition. Most people, and I'm in Kentucky, I was telling you today, uh, I was out on University of Louisville campus talking to young people. Overwhelmingly, the young women and even the young men we talked to were horrified that abortion has been banned here. Well, most Americans are against me, abortion. They said to me, I mean, if um, for abortion, most Americans, yeah. for abortion 65%. They're for abortion yeah. rights. Yeah. Yeah. But they said to me, they've never seen anybody in public speaking for abortion before. They heard me say abortion in the crew that I'm with, and they thought that we must be Christian fascists against abortion. And they were or like, I was going to run away. Yeah. Right. And they heard we're for abortion rights and they got very excited. And this is the point. There's very few people who speak up and stand up for this. And we are the majority, but if we don't fight for it, we're going to lose this right. right. Yeah. And we are like yeah. at the tipping point. When I heard, when I was asked to do this by Annie, uh, I said, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I don't want to deal with this. It's just, I'll get a bunch of shit. And then I thought, that's fucking stupid. This is important. Of course I'm standing up for it. And Kentucky is banning all abortion, right? I think that's we right. should... Uh, <laughs> I think we should ban derbies <laughs> and fried chicken. I'm not wearing that derby anymore. There's no way you're giving up chicken, Mike. <laughs> right, you know, the hat fuck can them. go, but the chicken. <laughs> I'm taking a stand. No more derbies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm sure they will miss you, Mike. <laughs> well, I think, you know, look, there's a super majority on the Supreme Court. It's it, Trump appointed three fascist judges. They joined previous fascist judges who are sitting there. Um, and this is, they, this is the highest court in the land. There's been assaults on abortion growing for 40 years. They're very organized. They've been restricting it, restricting it. They harass women outside clinics. They shame women. They've killed doctors. They bomb clinics, all of this. But I think we have to understand the highest court in the land, this is a tipping point. And we have to draw the line. It's bad. And yeah. this is why, yeah, you know, I was speaking to and corresponding with a, 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 somebody who has written on the Supreme Court and covered it. Um, for decades professionally and I some of us in the initiate the initiators of rise up for abortion rights said if this would be the most one of the most significant reversals of a fundamental human and civil right in U.S. history and they wrote back and said I really agree this is so true and if this happens not only will I just for everybody listening or watching 
Forcing women to have children against their will is barbaric. It is a form of enslavement. It shatters lives. Women are driven into poverty. They're trapped in abuse. They're driven deeper into poverty. They're forced to drop out of school. The kids that they have many times, they usually have kids already when they get abortions, are, are you know, they suffer from all the consequences of this. And the woman suffers. And so, yeah. and, but you know, the- this is something that is going to be horrific if we let it happen for half of humanity. But it's also going to accelerate an assault on so many other rights. What's an attack? Also under attack. Absolutely, because it, it, it's dominoes. And this yep. is uh, not only an attack on women, but irresponsible men and men who are jerks. It, it's going to hit them too. I'm offended. <laughs> and it's going to accelerate the it, whole fascist program. That you know, they, they right now there's attacks on teaching the history of this country and its white supremacy. And attacks on black people, there's attacks on immigrants, there's attacks on the, the science of climate change, on LGBTQ rights. All of those horrific and unjust assaults are going to be strengthened if this goes down without a fight. And conversely, if we stand up and draw a line and, and beat the, this back, if we actually create a political climate, which is possible through unleashing the fury of women, through unleashing the fury of others ones who don't want to see this happen, and create such an international embarrassment for the court, their legitimacy is on the line, um, because people rise up, not a one-day protest, but again and again, in mass struggle and resistance, like we saw in the beautiful rising against the police murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Well, how come if Black Lives Matter had more uh, had more people than this? You know, that's crazy yeah. to me. Uh, yeah, and both and where's Hillary? Where's both Hillary matter. and Michelle? Are they speaking out? They're not. The Democrats are pretty silent on this. And that's having a very negative effect on most. That's why most people don't know it's happening right. and they're not standing up. So we've, we're calling on people to act wherever you are, to spread the word, to go to the website, rise up for abortion to join the week of protest. Because if we stop this, which we need to, then we have a fighting people. Then we have a lot more strength. That doesn't solve everything. But we, we actually save a lot of lives and we create a lot of freedom to go forward and fight you know, I'll be fighting for a revolution. Other people in Rise Up for Abortion Rights will be fighting for different solutions. But we'll have the space to do that. Whereas if we lie down for this, what we get right. is accelerated fascism, enslavement of women, and a further dynamic of a complicit people where people learn to accept one atrocity after another. Yeah, and that really happens. is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah what, what can I... Do you, have, uh, do you have anything that people that are listening or watching... Uh, what would you like people to do? What's an immediate action that they could do to help out? Uh, oh, wear green you. and go to the streets. Yeah, so we have the oh. one thing is get the green bandana. I know Mike has uh, produced some no effects green bandanas. Which oh, is really yes, nice. we did. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to show? Uh, no, there, there, I have a photo of one. Okay. Uh, I'm getting it together. I have to All right. Uh, oh, no, I have this. This is pretty awesome. No more hangers! <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong? A lot of build-up going on here. Uh, that was Bobby Dearest. You know, she was the first uh, real feminist. No wire hangers. I think that should be a scene that we... That's a good slogan to bring back. <laughs> she, well, actually, she, tomorrow... So bizarre. When does this broadcast? When does this broadcast? Four weeks. No. no. Uh, we're going to do a special broadcast. I'm going to push this okay. one. Probably, well, th- probably this week. Okay. I, so I will have bandanas I, by then. No effects have, ba- have green bandanas we're selling that say yes. fuck the kids on them. Yeah. And the hashtag is green number four abortion on all the social media That's on there too. But get, a, get it. I know. I saw it. It looks good. Get a green bandana. Wear it every day. Tell people what it's for. This is a symbol that came out of, like I said, Argentina. It was taken up in Colombia. It was taken up as an international symbol of abortion rights. And that's where they get, went in the streets and they did what everybody thought was impossible. In a highly Catholic country, very patriarchal, very, very repressive, they went in the streets and they decriminalized abortion through their relentless struggle. So we take this up here, wear it, and tell people what it means. Um, and sign up on the website for the week of action. May 14th is going to be a mass day across the country, protests in every city and town across this country to stand up and say, we refuse to let the Supreme Court take away abortion rights, abortion on demand and without apology. So sign up, organize where you are for that. You can donate to Rise Up for Abortion Rights. We flew down to Kentucky. We're organizing on the ground. It takes money. We're printing the materials at this. Beautiful things. We're posting them everywhere. Abortion on demand without apology. It needs funds. 
tell your pastor, your minister, your I know you're an atheist network, whatever your atheist. mosque no, or synagogue, tell your classmates, I'm Jew tell your coworkers. Or you know, if you don't, you don't co-workers. Co yeah, you, right? think we, co you think we work? Well, I'm your co well, I don't know. She's you? a comedian. That's not work. <laughs> no. Morgan works. She yeah, works it's, hard. It's harder yeah. to be a comedian. The Morgan, what do you, how much have you heard about the assault on abortion rights? Um, not too much. I know yeah. what I've said to you that I don't understand half of the shit that's going on just because from a law law standpoint, it doesn't make any fucking sense how they can push this. And through. how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel to know that? Oh, like, as a person who's had an yeah. abort, as a person who's had an abortion, um, what? Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, one in four women. Yeah. If I wasn't able to, I don't know where I would, uh, if I was forced to have a kid at 17, you're not allowed my to bring kids. My life wouldn't be the same as it is now. You can't I mean, bring I'm not, kids into comedy I'm not clubs. like, no. so, <laughs> I, yeah. You can't, you can't bring your kids. I wouldn't be a comedian. Yeah. I would still work in, I wouldn't work in tech probably. I don't know. I don't know where I'd oh, be. Oh, you would be probably. in tech? You'd probably be richer now. I know I used to work in tech, but yeah. I probably wouldn't have been able to go to college. Wouldn't have been able, like, there's so much that you wouldn't be able to do. And it's like, it basically steals your life. If you, if you want to have a kid, go for it. If you don't, don't. And I don't understand why this is um, Even a fucking something issue. anybody yeah. can vote on. Yeah. And, and this what, does not make sense. What's, it, what's kind of a, not a coincidence, but all these states that are bringing these odds forward, they're all for the death penalty. Every one of these states believe in the death yeah. penalty. Yeah. So your argument, you know, fuck you. It doesn't yeah. make any sense at all. Right. We, you, the you state have can to decide to until, kill certain people, yeah. but this little itty bitty thing that can't even think, totally stupid, you can, uh, yeah. that's illegal. Well, and also yeah, their well, just, the welfare you know in those, those states are, are yeah. terrible. So like, most of the people getting, like having children or wanting abortions are in impoverished areas, which then all of the same people who are trying to outlaw abortion are also trying to outlaw welfare, which also doesn't make any sense. Well, it is, because if you control. want someone to f like forcibly have a child and then you care about the kid until it's born and then, sorry, you don't have any welfare and I'm sorry you're poor, but... Well, all that, you know, it, it, it reveals that the They don't fight, care about kids. The, yeah. Yeah, this the isn't about abortion. They don't, care about, about, so they don't never, care about people. It has this isn't about love. They don't care about care. people. Babies. No, it's it has about never been about babies. Controlling Their a population. The kids. So, They've yeah. never yeah. cared Fuck about the babies. Kids. Fuck the kids. They've wait, never wait, cared what? about life. They actually are in it for control over women. Right. And there is a very big revengeist, it's a misogynist, patriarchal streak in this country um, that is still it is furious about all of the advances women have made. Look, women have not won liberation. There's tremendous sexual violence, discrimination degradation all of this women are not free okay but no they are really outraged that women have gotten out of their place and that's why the movement and people need to understand this if they take away abortion they are coming for birth control next oh yeah they are coming for birth control they want women back in the position of being forced to have children against their will and it's not about the babies and it's not about the life it's about control over women that's all it is yeah and it's all uh, right. sex workers too you know i have to bring up sex workers because there's Everything they do is illegal. That's the same thing. It's women's rights. Uh, whether you're, you know, uh, women should be able to do what the fuck they want to. And this is just another thing. Yeah. But but prostitution is already illegal and it isn't in most of the civilized world. But in this country, it is. Well, I think what you're saying, too, is it's like in society now, we don't tell these people that, like, are believing in this fucking imaginary thing. We don't heckle them and be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? This is ridiculous. You know, we can talk mm -hmm. about it all day, but if you're listening to this podcast, maybe you can get your green bandana on and go skate down to your local Planned Parenthood. And then those people that are protesting out there with those little tables, you can just go flip them over. How many people do you have <laughs> a skateboard? And tell them to go fuck off. What's that? How about walk down to your, look, huh. skateboard? Steve, yeah. I don't think we're getting that many skateboards. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to drive. They're going to get your license plate number. Uh, Jackass. And you don't want to walk. I, yeah, I, I never thought of that. Okay. Yeah, I don't walk. Then you're going to have to run. Skateboard, huh? I like that I, you guys I, I are really concerned about how you're getting places. Well, you know, yeah. oh, the look, mode look of transportation the yeah. the is woman, really important. The woman who's here. wearing barely olive clothing. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is not green. This is this is Gap. You're this is dressed, Gap. You know who right. you're dressed hundred percent in olive green. You look like a fucking olive. <laughs> Well, I, I feel like olive. You should be in that bottle right now. Martini. All right, I'll t I'll take that. 
You know, but still. Put that in your that pipe and under. smoke like, it. Pipe. I don't even have a pipe. <laughs> I don't smoke. Okay. Mm. We got off base. Uh, no, it's fine. We're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Go to, awkward. Go to Planned Parenthood. Go make you know. Go beat go up. Go to the street. No, uh, protest and tell and tell people this is important. And uh, fucking Democrats, you know, Democrats. Well, this is the thing. Democrats aren't wearing yes. green. They should get pinched. Pinch the Democrats. They, yeah. Well, you know, not a cute I think pinch. These Democrats. No, a real pinch. Right on the side. balls. Oh, no, no. <laughs> to the you. No, potty mouth. No, just you know, un- no. under the arm. That's where you pinch someone. Behind yeah, it. Yeah, right there. You gonna argue about where to pinch someone? Yep. Great. <laughs> that is not what I was prepared to talk about. Where to pinch someone. <laughs> What's uh, that website? So, 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 where, where do you think? Where do you pinch someone? Where, where do you think that people should be pinching someone if they're not wearing green? Yeah. 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 If they're not wearing um, green, where should be, be, we be pinching people? Where's the legal spot? <laughs> Show me on the doll. Okay. Look, yeah, you, you, uh, we're not going to bring it down but to I'm our gonna level. I'm going to come back to what you said. I'm going to come back to fuck the Democrats in this sense. Whoa. Yeah. Is that, look. Shots fired. Part of the problem we've had is that people think that the, your whole political universe and your choice is between who you're going to vote for, blue or red, every four years or whatever, or maybe every two years. And this is part of what's gotten us into this mess because the Christian, first of all, the state is not on the side of the people. Patriarchy is built into this system, into this society. That's a bigger discussion, but it's an important one. So it favors that no matter who you have in power. But um, if all you do is choose between one party that is now, the Republican Party is a fully fascist party. It is a completely taken over. This is the party of the insurrection. This is the party of the Donald Trump. This is the party of, of rigging the election, suppressing the vote. And Democrats are right wing now. And we're right wing now. If we're not fighting for abortion rights right now, then we're right wing. Yeah, well, you have one side of the the, elect, the electables that you're going to vote for is outright fascist, and they refer to women as host bodies sometimes. Host and the bodies. other half, wow, yeah, the Republicans say things like that. I've seen awesome. them. host, but the, there, there's two lives. There's the fetus, and there's the host body. That's that's they don't use the word woman sometimes. They don't call they don't the call the fetus party, a parasite, do they? Because yeah, the other more... party is led by the other party is led by Biden, who won't even say the word abortion. I don't the think Democrats he, he have knows been it so anymore. defensive. He, he has a lot of kids. He has a lot of kids. He capit- they capitulate for years. The Democrats have ceded the high moral ground to these fascists. And if we want something else to happen, we, we have to get out and do it ourselves. And Americans are are I have to say they're so. You know, everybody says Americans are lazy, but there's a lot of truth to it. What? And they oh sit there and they let it We're the laziest people. And around the world, people, this is why I bring up Colombia, Argentina, Mexico. These are places that decriminalize abortion through struggle. And they're not right? lazy. They put it on the line. They're not lazy. They got, the best, they got the best coca the leaves. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, Colombians yeah. are not lazy at all. No, they have coca leaves. Yeah, they have coca leaves. I have a theory, though, on why we're lazy. It's because we're the melting pot. Everybody that was a savage, it took so much to get here. They're just tired. Well, our they're lifestyle. Tired. But no, generations later, they're still tired. tired. No. Yeah. Well, you well, you know, you, it's because our standard of living is so high. That's why people... There you go. Are Everything is so because, easy that uh, we don't... Do, do you know how many people die of starvation in the U.S. every year? This is Millions. a real figure. Millions. How many? None. Except uh, bulimics. You can always get food here. In any city, you can, you can get burgers. In Brazil, in places you can't get food. Uh, homeless people, no one dies of starvation. Really? Yeah, really. Actually, that's insane. People Look are malnourished. Up. People who, who you yeah. know, who don't eat right and have eating Well, that's problems. like half of our country. But that surprised me when I found that out. And it's be, it be, when life is this easy, when you can just kind of coast, people mm-hmm. are lazy. I mean, it's not, shit, I'm a rock well, star. Well, it's what also, oh, you're the lazy It's also though. the fact. I work hard. Mm-hmm. It's also the fact that, I mean, it is the standard of living, um, but it's related to the fact that America this is the U.S. is a capitalist imperialist country. It's the top dog imperialist in the world, and so it lives like a parasite off the la- the labor, the toil, the exploitation. Off of the people host around. countries. Pardon me. The host on the host, host countries. Host, shout yeah. out, yeah. shout like, out, no cap. You know, there's there's forty thousand children in the in the coltan mines of Congo. What, what kind of mine is that? Coltan. 
T that make Salt? our cell phones run. Diamonds, Mike. We <laughs> live at the top. Look at the clothes we wear. It's, I'm not blaming myself or you. We live in a society. If you want that to change, we have to change the system. But we live in a system that feasts. America feasts off the rest of the world. So in America, people are over, you know, they, they are over consumption. You have to, like, spend goo gobs, trillions of dollars to advertise. Goo gobs? Convince them to buy stuff that they don't need. Whereas... All over the world, people don't have stuff that they absolutely yeah. need. But this is the yeah. this is American imperialism, and so it, it fosters a laziness, a myopic, an individualism, a me me. Right. All this is part of what we have to overcome. And people think that it doesn't apply to them, so they don't care. Yeah, but this they don't is going to apply to everybody. They don't understand the domino yeah. effect of what this but can do, and at a certain point, it will affect you. And just this one is going to affect important. everybody. And negatively, but not in like negatively. a first person situation. But the, it's, it's gonna it's gonna fuck us all because it will. But I wish I was aborted. You know how 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 lame it is when someone brings their new baby over and you're like yeah yeah touch the baby hold yeah, the baby yeah. Uh, yeah nobody wants no 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 more new babies no especially unwanted. So you're ones. both right. You're both right. It's, China it's, a lot of people think that oh it's not gonna affect me so they do nothing right. and it absolutely will affect everybody some directly and everybody indirectly. Yeah, and it's We're both poison right. society. And, yeah. and the idea, look, it's also you know, one in three women or one in four women gets an abortion mm -hmm. and other people who can become pregnant get abortions. Um, trans, non-binary people uh, get abortions. So all, you know, a third of that population is going to be affected directly. But the idea that the state could force you to have a child against your will is going to hang like a terror over all women. At it's, all stages in life. Yeah, and Whether we're, we're going to lose so much respect. The rest of the world is going to, I mean, they don't respect us anyway, but we're going to lose more respect. I mean, that, And actually, it's going to affect the rest it's, of the world. It's too, what third world countries do. Spread. You know, third world countries. That's, you know, you can't get abortions in the Middle East or in Ireland, yeah. Northern Ireland. How about that? Some countries, though, you can still get a female circumcision with you. They use cans, right? Africa? Yeah. No, Jews don't do that. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, they do. Oh. <laughs> they most certainly do. Well, to, to guys, who cares? If guys get one. We don't care. Here's uh, your abortion. <laughs> Here's your abortion. Here's your abortion. But I think, let, Mike, let me ask you, because I think, first of all, I think it's very important, and I appreciate that you are having me on to talk about this, that we did the Instagram Live. Um what kind of a uh, did you get any questions response what kind of uh, all, all reception? good responses all good and it surprised yeah. me uh because a lot of people who like trump uh like my band too but it was all positive people uh said they didn't know what was happening and thank you for doing the show and that's why i'm going to do the show and we're going to do one every day since our that's great we're going to do it all the time yeah all the time great yeah. You got all your points. I think people need to hear them over and over again. Do you know? Uh, do you know the uh, people? Not know them, but have you heard of In Decline? Yes. Yeah, those are uh, those are some of our friends there. Did the, they just did that stuff in the Ozarks with the the big church, the big uh, Jesus, the Jesus of the Ozarks, where they put the anti-abortion sign from like that that they scaled it with ropes or whatever, and then they have the news on there, and the guy's trying to grab it, and the wind's blowing it. And the guy's like, do you see, you see what the devil's doing right now? The devil loves abortion. <laughs> I have to watch. I haven't seen that. They've done some really oh, great stuff. On the you got to check that yeah, out. That's awesome. That. The Art of Protest is a good movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that movie. I saw it in, in L.A. When it, when it, at some film festival. It was great. <sighs> I was supposed to be there. I didn't go. Lazy, ah, lazy well. Americans. Lazy Americans. Yeah, there we go. Jews, too. <laughs> No, it was a really, it was a very good screening. I mean, it, it's a great movie. And what they do is, is very important. We need a lot of creativity like that. And I think, you know, to Chris's question earlier, everybody has different things that they do. And there's a need and a way for everybody to take up this fight in their lives, wherever you are. I mean, you know, it'd be important for people who work in medical professionals to wear green armbands or green bandanas to pick a day during the week mm -hmm. of action. They usually wear green scrubs, though. That's, it'd be, it wouldn't show out, show as much. Construction well, workers. Wear white coats, people who are working know, on, a, on a highway things. wearing the orange, they would really stick out. So the students wear white. are doing days of like walkouts. Um, there's different ways. There's a, a Spanish speaking like network that. as part of Rise Up for Abortion Rights. They're doing an action across the country at churches. You would like this on Mother's Day, saying don't force us to May 8th, which is Mother's Day as part mm -hmm. of the week of action. 
um, and they're going to do flash mobs. They, like there's a dip, there's a ways in for everybody. So you do music and you're doing concerts. You're bringing the green bandana. I know you're going to wave a green flag at one of your. Um, We're going to uh, make everyone on stage festivals. wear a green bandana. Yeah. So there's there's different ways to bring it in. Uh, performers, Morgan, mm-hmm. other people. You know, wear the green on yeah. stage all week. Um, actually, wear it all the time, but also during the week of action. There's just really in the arts and the sciences, in the streets, on the campuses, everybody has to find a way to participate right. and show where they stand. And I think that really darker green, like Sam's wearing, is better than this this light olive beige. You're not making, Morgan, a, sta- you you're not making a statement, Morgan. He's the one who didn't tell you to wear green. Mike, you didn't no, I did. the I word did. well. It's- <laughs> Mike, Mike was told to wear green, and he's wearing... Yeah, he's not sure. I've, this is cool olive. green. That's Everyone a, knows I'm wearing green. That's a dope shirt. I didn't say this was green. green. My pants are green. Shirt. You can't see them. Okay. But. Oh, okay. Yeah, shoelaces are green. She's <laughs> she's wearing camo, you know, fatigues. Yeah. So because she's a, you she's would about this. You shirt. probably got she's those kind of pants fight. on too. I I have um you yeah can, not camouflage pants. <laughs> I've regular blue jeans. She's not wearing pants. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm, I'm you're, definitely you're a freedom fighter. It's a metaphor. Fight against anti-abortion. All right, so uh, this has been good. Yeah. Uh, the one argument I wanted to tell people who are who are against abortions, because these are people who normally don't care about other people, but they do care about themselves, and they care about living in a safe neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, if you've read Freakonomics, which I did, uh, they talk about how Reagan had a very low crime rate during his term in office and especially towards the end and he kept touting that and it's because roe versus wade they found they they made the point that in 73 when when abortion became legal 14 to 16 years later the crime rate the crime rate went down and that's because unwanted children there weren't so many unwanted children and in romania uh on the opposite side they made women have children they were trying to build more communists you not real communism. I know, that's I know. No, yeah, that's I know. not actual yeah. communism. I know the difference. Uh, <laughs> you're a kibbutz type communist. No, I'm a new communist, Baba Vakian, new communism type communist. Okay, that's a that's, lot because the kibbutzes are very small scale. Well, yeah, but, but communism only works up. on a small scale, right? It doesn't work on 13 time zones in Russia. No, it's, it's never it been done. You have to, you have to it's know never everybody. been done correctly, right? Because so. kibbutzes are <laughs> neither still is, neither is capitalism though, and that was the whole point. But kibbutzes are genuine, still are still patriarchal. Genuine communism, um, and and again, I'm speaking as a communist, not for all of Rise Up for Abortion Rights, which is a diverse effort. But for as a communist, I'm a follower of the revolutionary leader Baba Vakin. And genuine, real communism only works on a global scale because you have to get beyond the capitalist mode of production. I don't know about that, and, but you have to know people. Well, you have to know your neighbors. You have habit. to know your neighbors. You have to know who you're fucking over. If you knew everyone you were fucking over, you might not fuck them over so much like capitalists No, do. you think about a slave plantation. Uh-uh. Okay, slave okay, plantations okay, were not that many people. They knew each other. It was the, it was the mode of production fucked mm-hmm. people over and conditioned. White supremacy grew out of the slave trade and the market for it. It justified it. It flowed from right. and then reinforced it. The ideology of fucking over your neighbor of clawing your way to the top and not caring about those who you step on to get there, that is the ideology that flows out of capitalism. I like how you say the ideology. That's a good word, ideology. And and it sometime we'll have the discussion. I understand it's not the podcast today, and that's fine. I respect that. It's always the podcast. What is genuine communism and how it could work on a global scale and actually why you can't get to communism without unleashing the fury of women and breaking all the chains on women and all oppression based on gender and sexual orientation, a big part of the new communism that Baba Vakian BA has forged. All this would be worth having a discussion about um, because it's not what most people think. And frankly, it is capitalism that is destroying the planet and threatening the future of humanity. It already destroyed the planet and we have, and we have no future either. Yeah. It already, it already destroyed the planet and there really isn't a future. Uh, you know, speaking of communism, I have a uh, a communist manifesto signed by Karl Marx. Wow! No, I don't. They don't. He never signed it. I was kidding. 
I, I don't know. Maybe he did. <laughs> That'd be pretty Maybe cool. Maybe he did. No, no, Karl Marx was he not into a, signing he books. He had a whole book he tour. He was not at book signings. <laughs> there weren't book signings back then. There was. He didn't do a tour. <laughs> no, and he, he did quite well for himself. But too. did you ever read okay. the Communist Manifesto? Of course I did. I read the People's oh, History so and some. Well, Noam Chomsky. I read more existentialist books. Oh yeah, but, same. Okay. Yeah. I love that that wall. Being in nothingness. Blah. <laughs> that thing is long. That's a tome. It's good though. Okay. It's hard to understand. I, re- I prefer Steve Martin's biography. The Steve Mars biography? Yeah. Board standing up? Yeah. I like that better. <laughs> He's than wearing a bunny costume? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is a better <sighs> read. Yeah, it's a better read. If we're talking about books you're made to read in college, you know? Fun. No, fuck, not fun. Uh, Sansar, you're, you're awesome. Well, thank you. Really, thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. It's very important work. Thank you. Listen, thanks for making the time, Morgan. Thanks for joining us. Chris, I like your questions off camera. Very helpful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to do this. And and let's stay in touch about it. It's very important. Let's stay in touch because you're you're awesome. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, every day we're doing this. Every day. I'm here. (laughs) Everyone wear green. Bye. (laughs) Steve Martin's book, Not Being in Nothingness. You're wrong about virtues of Christianity And you're wrong if you agree with Sean Hannity If you think that pride is about nationality You're wrong You're wrong when you imprison people turning tricks And you're wrong about trickle-down economics If you think that punk rock doesn't mix with politics You're wrong You're wrong For hating queers And eating steers If you kill for the thrill of the hunt You're wrong About wearing fur And not hating Aunt Coulter Cause she's a cunted cunt Or you're wrong If you celebrate Columbus Day And you're wrong If you think there'll be a judgment day If you're a charter member of the NRA You're wrong You're wrong if you support capital punishment And you're wrong if you don't question your government If you think her reproductive rights are inconsequent You're wrong You're wrong fighting jihad Your blind faith in God Your religions are all flawed You're wrong about drug use When it's not abuse I hope you never reproduce You're getting high on the down low A victim of the Cointel Pro You're wrong and will probably never know If you'd like to see the entire video of each episode and listen commercial free, go to FatMikeDude.com and subscribe.